Hello, and welcome back to Designs for Zen with Riftwing Designs, myself. I am so happy to see you all here. Happy New Year. We are now at the end of the first month of 2021, <laughs> and we're starting our new routine. So for this year, we're going to be doing yoga every last Saturday. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my good friend Kermit the Grog, and also I haven't figured out the pronunciation yet, if you can put it in the chat, my good friends. So welcome. We are going to be doing Mandalorian yoga. Steen, awesome. <laughs> welcome, Steen. So get ready. We're going to be doing some really fun Mandalorian yoga. There's the playlist. It's also in the chat. And if you want to use any other music, feel free. But of course, as we all know, with the new rules, you've got to have your own music or else not stream it. So find your own Zen today. As we get started, we're going to just be doing a gentle yoga to get back into the swing of things. If you have been in some of my online workshops on props or aids, if you want to have pillows, blocks, paper towel rolls, anything to assist you, feel free. But I'm just going to be doing a basic mat routine, though I do have a block here just in case, which... <laughs> Of course, the purple everything matches, right? I don't do this on purpose, I swear, but <laughs> you know. So let's get into it now. Everybody find a nice comfortable seat and we will get going. Oh, welcome back to your mat. So get started again, find that easy seat. Maybe you sit on a block or a bolster or a blanket just to raise your hips a little bit, but find some place that feels good to you. And just ease into it. We're going to start with some breathing before we really get into the stretching, but if your body is calling for stretching right now, go for it. Again, here at Rift Wind Designs, our goal is to have you find what works for you. You don't have to follow along, and the best part about streaming on Twitch is that you can't see me. And, oh, I always say it wrong. I can't see you, and you can see me, but you don't have to be me. So as we get started in this Star Wars Mandalorian yoga with your awesome music playing in the background, just kind of feel where you're at as I go through the background of today's session. So I am cosplaying as Sabine Wren, a female Mandalorian warmer. <laughs> I cannot speak this morning. Sabine Wren is a female human Mandalorian warrior and revolutionary leader during the early rebellion in uh, Star Wars Rebels, which is fantastic. So if you haven't seen it, there may be a couple mini spoilers. Definitely recommend Clone Wars and Rebels. They're long. It took me probably three months to watch them all, but it was so worth it. And that's why we're here today. So Sabine was a warrior and familiar with military strategy, but she was also, and this is my favorite part, an artist and free-spirited. She was driven by a desire to express herself artistically. And of course, she regularly changed her hair color, just like me. So I was like, oh my gosh, kindred spirit, here we go, Sabine. And I actually had purple hair at the time I finished it. And this is the color hair and the, the cut of hair she had at the end and end of the series. So I was like, bang. Now, the other thing is she also paints and changes her armor, so it's almost never the same, and <laughs> that makes cosplay a little difficult. So you do what you can, and that's exactly why we're here, right? You do what you can, and just be happy with what you've got. So today's session will have a longer focus on breathing and meditation, really easing in and out of the practice. And we're going to share this self-discipline because Mandalorians, Jedi, a lot of Star Wars focuses is on calming the mind, focusing with the spirit, and really just understanding yourself before you can save the world, right? So we're going to do that today. One of the quotes that I really loved is that creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. Creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. So as we go through today, have fun, go off the script and do your own thing. And one of the things that I am going to do is I notice this is a little off center and I don't know how many of you people are crazy like me, but if it's not square, I'm probably going to get a little OCD. So there you go. As always, mention in chat if there's anything that's really driving you up a wall because we want this to be as zen as possible. 
So creativity is the greatest rebellion in existence. Have fun. Go off the script. Do what speaks to you. Be artistic. Be yourself. Do your own thing. Do you. Don't be me. Be you. Now that we've gotten ourselves in a comfy seat, we know where we're going today, we're going to focus first on our intention. So for those of you that are new to yoga or that haven't joined me for our Riftwing Designs for Zen session, the intention is really just finding a focus for your practice so that if your mind starts to wander, you can draw it back into that. It can be a phrase, a wish, a prayer. You can find your own now, or if you don't have one, I'm going to offer up Peace Begins With Me. Peace Begins with me. Whatever your intention is, take a moment to focus on it and then we'll begin with a couple cleansing breaths. To begin our practice, take one inhale in, let it out. We'll do three. Another deep inhale and let it out and then take your arms above as you inhale and as you exhale big exhale drawing your hands to heart as we begin we're going to begin with breathing if what i prompt you with does not speak to you you're welcome to find your own breath I can never do anything that's uncomfortable or painful. We follow Bob Ross style here, so do what works for you. There's no mistakes, there's nothing wrong, as long as it works for you. To begin, start to notice your inhales and exhales. Are they deep or light? Are they coming from your belly, your throat, to your chest? Shoulders shrugging when you breathe. Try and find ease in your breath. Noticing where it catches. Noticing the temperature of your breath on your tongue, through your nose, if you can. Begin to notice where your body touches the ground. Notice the feeling of the air on your body. In Jedi meditation, feeling the world touching you in all these different places just by simply being. Begin to deepen your breaths if you haven't already. If you need to, you can place a hand in your belly to encourage inhaling from the diaphragm, opening, and pressing in and up with the exhales. Your eyes can be open or closed. If a seat doesn't work, you can always lay down. We're going to be here for a little bit. Let go of any tension that's sitting in your body. Know that for the next 50 minutes, peace begins with me. And we're going to go into Ujjayi breath. You can continue just having deep breaths. You can count to make your breaths even. You can do square breath, which we've done in previous practices. Again, which are on YouTube. Today we're going to do Ujjayi or ocean breathing. Again, connecting to the world. So we're going to start by doing mouth breathing. And we're going to inhale. 
And as you exhale, kind of fogging a mirror, like roar sound, but kind of so you're pushing the air through your throat. And you're just feeling tightness in your throat. Don't breathe too fast or you might hyperventilate, but just focus on the sensation of making a, a, a fogging sound. And then as you go through, maybe you close your mouth and start to exhale through the nose and you should hear that ocean sound start to come in waves. Waves crashing. Breaths forcing their way out. Find your pace. This can help to soothe and settle if done in a way that works for you. Especially if you're irritated or frustrated or angry. All of those dark side emotions. Come back to your breath. Let go of the dark side. Allow in the light. Release your anger in a good way. <laughs> By finding your own peace, which begins with me. And again, if Ujjayi breath isn't working for you, you can come back to just deep, even breathing. We'll be here for another 30 seconds or so, finding your own peace, finding what you need to reconnect and relax. Two more breaths at your own pace. And then come back to normal breathing. Just noticing the little subtle differences in your body from when we started just by breathing. If this is all you can do today, this is enough. Come back to breathing throughout your practice. Again, to find that peace, to settle your emotions. We're gonna start with some warm up stretches now. So first off, I really like to do the shoulder shrugs. So up and back and down and forward. I like to make kind of a square movement. Your hands can go wherever they need to be. Still on your legs, on the ground. Just focus on really moving those shoulders to wherever they go for you. Again, no pain, just ease and stretching. And if there is any place that speaks to you that you need to stretch more, go right ahead. And then in yoga, we find balance just like with the force. So shoulders down and back, up and forward, going the opposite direction. Again, finding what you need in your practice. I'm actually going to do a little side stretch here. And then when you're ready, we're going to start by doing neck movements. Don't do a full circle yet. Just kind of rock it back and forth, finding where your neck is stretchy or not. And let me tell you, a couple mornings ago, I was definitely not stretchy. But I took time out just to do this. And maybe start to go to one side and just pause there. Use your nose to guide your neck and kind of keep your head sideways, but twist your neck by guiding it with your nose and see if there's any other sticky points. And if there is, you can just hold there or maybe rock gently. Place that up on the side that your head is going down. And just massaging them. 
we've got until the pandemic ends. Come back to your breath. Come back to your intention. And then release your hand if you're with me. Take your head back up and then go to the other side gently, gently, noticing the differences. Again, maybe moving your nose around, guiding your head and finding what different sticking points may be on this side. And then doing what you need here to really stretch it out. Using your arms, breathing. If you have a tennis ball, like we did on our massage yoga, you can roll it around your neck here. Again, there are actually very few strict rules when you're trying to find your own yoga. Of course, no pain. Come back to center. And now if you want to do some rolls, gently do what works for you. In yoga, you have to think about your connections, your breathing, your body, respecting others. There's actually a whole bunch of rules and sub-rules, guidelines such as not wanting like a Jedi, very similar to the Jedi code, right? Connecting, finding mindfulness and meditation. And come back and do any other movements with your neck and shoulders you need here. And then we're gonna inhale, arms up, reach them up as high as you go, and then draw your shoulder blades back and down and notice the difference see how wide it opens from being shrugged up to open do a couple of those just feel your shoulder blades here and then exhale go to one side twisting to where your body wants to be inhale up exhale other side again twisting and finding what you need and from here you can go back and forth Going fast or slow, or just like I really like to do, just holding these deep twists and breathing into it. Wherever you are, make sure you balance both sides. And when you're ready, we're gonna roll our shoulders back and down, planting our hands out. Put your feet out in front of you in staff pose. I'm just gonna turn so you can see here. So my hands are facing fingers forward, sitting up straight, really feeling those shoulder blades roll back even more, pulling my toes and my kneecaps up, making this an active pose as I breathe here. And if you want, now that you've been sitting up tall, if you want to do a forward fold, keep your spine straight at first. And then allow the bend. And there's a different stretch if you keep it straight versus if you bend. Find what speaks to you. Grab your legs or your toes. And then let's go into a diamond and really those hips so now you're just drawing your feet in putting your feet together and you're making a little diamond with their legs the further out your feet are the easier it should be the more gentle the stretch and the more you pull it in the more intense the stretch will be and then sit up tall and if it's available you can always try to bend forward here again finding what works for you breathe here as you focus on your breath, maybe you can feel the back of your lungs expanding, those lobes in the back, because we're compressing the front. Maybe do a couple ujjayi breaths here. Those ocean breaths will help you to find focus in intense stretches. I'm even going to roll my neck here and just do a little bit more release in the neck and shoulders. And wherever you are from here, we're going to flip over to whatever side you want. I'm just going to do it this way into our all fours and just start to do your cats and cows. So your cow is when you're shining your chest through your shoulders and looking up. Cat is when you're pressing in, arching your back. Inhaling in the cow. Exhaling in the cat. You can focus on moving your tailbone and hips here but don't over articulate. Also, focus on moving your shoulder blades and shoulders. I mean, you can do this, focusing on each body part, your wrists, your knees, the backs of your feet. You could spend so much time just here. 
Speaking of hands and wrists, why don't we play around with our wrists a little bit? So you can take your hands if it feels good, maybe put them so that the backs of your hands are down and your fingertips are facing in. This could be very intense on your wrists, so just be careful. And I like to do little teeny circles here just to warm up the backs of those wrists. This is one of those stretches. It's just like the computer stretches we've done before. You can also put your hands um, with your fingertips facing in. Like just play around now. Have a couple moments to just move your hands into different positions and see what works. So now I've, all I've done is I've twisted my hands and the fingertips are still facing back, but the palms are down instead of the backs of the hands. You'll notice all kinds of different stretches do different things to your body and some may work and some may be painful. And again, we avoid pain, right? So wherever you are, do those stretches. And then I'm just going to sit back and do a couple of little wooblies. I don't know the official term for these, but you know, like the ocean surfing again. <laughs> just letting those wrists go, moving your fingers around, playing around with it, right? You need to have flow. <laughs> And then wherever you are, we're going to go and do a couple leg stretches. Now, for here, you can tuck your toes under, maybe just do a little bit of back and forth. Again, do what your body speaks to. But for me, if you're with me, we're going to lift up one leg and we're going to reach it back and flatten the foot so you're keeping the heel sticking out and the toes tucked in. Keep your shoulder blades back and down. Make sure your hands are directly under your shoulders here. And if this is enough, stay right here. Maybe you bounce the leg here a little bit. Your gaze should be in front of you, flat down on the mat here. And maybe you raise that opposite arm into more of a bird dog pose. <laughs> Don't bounce your leg here. Actually, this is a challenge, right? And you can stay here or maybe you exhale and do a couple crunches. Get some of that Jedi fitness going. Exhale. And then hold it back out. Plant the hand, keep the foot raised. Bend the leg and just feel how your knee feels here. And then tuck the knee under again, but this time we're gonna swoop it out and do our fire hydrant pose. So you're using your hips, try and keep your body square. Just lifting up that hip, maybe doing some hip circles here. And your toes can be flexed or pointed Maybe you roll your ankle. Remember to keep your gaze down and your neck stable. And then plant your foot back on the ground and just give it a nice stretch. And again, if at any point here you have any pain or you need to have a cushion under your knees, go right ahead. Go right ahead. From here, we're going to do another one of my favorites. So take the, that foot and cross it behind you. And then look over the opposite leg. Stretching again your neck and shoulders here. <sighs> Deep breaths. Remembering to breathe and come to your intention if you need. And then keeping your toes on the ground, tracing that big circle till your foot comes to the side. And if you can, if you plant the outside blade of your foot onto the ground here, I'll scooch over so you can see it, that'll give you a nice deep stretch. But you don't have to. And for me, I really like to just settle back into this stretch and let my head go. And if this doesn't work for you, you can always find child's pose. And wherever you are, come back up, draw your foot back, and then pull it in. Maybe do a couple more cat cows or shake it out. We're going to do the other side. So first off, finding it nice and square, kicking back your foot on the other side and maybe doing some bounces here remembering to keep your gaze down and just a little bit centered in front of your hands and then maybe lifting that opposite arm and if this is enough staying here or maybe do some crunches with me exhaling in inhaling to extend exhale inhale three more And one more. There we go. Now keeping the leg up, planting the hand. Noticing here, when you flex your foot, how it feels. And then we're going to draw it in. Push it back out. Maybe kick it back. 
draw it in and then we're going to swoop it out the other way and lift it up like your fire hydrant on the other side maybe doing some circles here and wherever you are then planting your foot back down and doing a nice deep stretch here keeping your body nice and parallel making sure those hands stay under the shoulders because you do shift and stretching out the back of your leg <sighs> and then cross it over and look to the opposite side breathing and then we're going to do the other direction so you're <laughs> sweeping your foot over and out putting it behind you this does not look right for you there you go putting it to the side and staying here planting that side blade of your foot down if you can and maybe sinking back onto your hips here and just coming into a nice bend or go into child's pose breathing notice the difference between the two sides And wherever you are coming back up and we're gonna go into our first down dog we're gonna do a couple but not many so if this is where you want to do some flows feel free because we're already halfway there can you believe it so your down dog your feet are back your heels don't have to touch your hands are in front of you your shoulder blade should be back and down so you're pressing in and trying to make a V with your body your gaze should be underneath you towards your feet neck loose and just let the head shake here yes and no and have the bend in your knees maybe pedaling them out we could spend another hour-long session talking about the different ways you can do down dog but I encourage you again to keep the knees bent. It doesn't have to look perfect, it just has to feel good. <sighs> and instead of calling it down dog, we can call it down loaf wolf. <laughs> those are pretty cool in the rebels. And from here, maybe going into plank, using your body to guide yourself forward. If you want, again, you can do a flow here, and if you're with me, you're walking your feet forward. We're going into a forward fold, and I'm just going to turn so you can see here. Just like with our down dog, keep the knees nice and bent, and just hang down. Maybe grabbing your opposite arms, shaking back and forth. Make sure you shake your head, let it go, and breathe. The goal here is just to let go of your neck and shoulders. And again, this took me many months to be able to relax enough to really let my neck feel loose. I just couldn't do it because I held so much tension. From here, plant your hands, find stillness and just notice. Notice the bend in your knees. Notice how your neck feels. Continue to breathe. And when you're ready, inhale, halfway lift, hands on shins, flat back, gaze comes straight down in front of you. Again, noticing your neck here. Exhale, fold. Inhale, we're coming all the way up for just a moment. And then exhale, hands down, Tadasana Mountain Pose. <sighs> How's it feel? If you need a break, grab some water. We're going to do a little bit of standing, so I'm just going to adjust here. So what we're going to do is another one of those photos that I posted on social media, again, at Rifting Designs, five-pointed star. It's Star Wars, right? We got to do our stars. So feet are going to be a little wider than hip distance apart. Shoulders back. Then you raise your arms up, and instead of just doing the T-pose, right, which is cool enough as it is, you rotate so your palms face forward, shoulders back, shine the chest out, and maybe lift your chin just a little so you're feeling the stretch in the back of your chest. And this might be enough for you. Breathe. For additional challenge, you can try and close your eyes and just feel. We're going to spend a moment just breathing and feeling the energy of this big, empowering star pose. 
Notice if your knees are locked, invite a gentle bend. Notice where your feet touch the ground. Make sure all of the edges of your feet are touching and balancing evenly. Notice your hips, if your tailbone is sticking out or tucked under. It should be tucked just a little. Engaging your core as you're standing here, pulling it in. Noticing your spine, trying to keep it straight and tall, maybe feeling like there's a string lifting your head up. And those shoulder blades again, back and down, feeling strength and ease in your shoulders and arms. And maybe you're feeling some burning now. We've been here for about 40 seconds. If you need a break, take that break. Really open and expand your fingers. Notice how your fingers go from just reaching out to opening and broadening. Shine those fingers wide open as you continue to stand. Open, neck, back a little bit more, chin up a little more. Shine the chest forward and breathe. Maybe coming back to your ujjayi. Ocean breath. Another 20 seconds, hold it here. And again, take a break if you need. Just feel it here. You got this. One more breath. Let those hands down, shake those shoulders out. Nice work. Now, widen your steps a little bit more. Take your hands back out. We're gonna do a forward fold, a wide-legged forward fold here. So you're swan diving and your hands are gonna come behind. If it's comfortable, you can then bind your arms together and just stretch out and up. And if this doesn't feel good, put your hands where you need them to be. As you're here, shake your head yes and no, just like we did in a normal forward fold. Make sure there's no lock in your knees. Or maybe your hands are just in front of you holding down. There's so many options again in this. You can put your hands in front of you. You can put your hands below you. You can put your hands in your ankles. You can cross your arms. You can reach back, have fun and play here for just a few moments. Find the wide legged forward fold stance that works for you. Every Mandalorian warrior has different armor. Every person's yoga is different and unique to them. Find what speaks to you. And wherever you are from here, we're gonna do a little flow. So if you need to rotate on your mat, we're gonna do kind of like a normal flow and if that works for you better, go ahead. But if you're with me, your feet are wider than your mat here, your hands are down. You're gonna walk your hands forward Take your feet in and kind of find your way back into a down dog. And then go forward, making your plank here. Put your knees down. Sink back into a child's pose. Breathing here. Inhale back up, tucking the toes. Another down dog, walking forward. And staying here. Then widen your feet again. Inhale, halfway lift, wide. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Hands to heart center. One more time, we're going down, bringing our feet in, stepping back and finding our down dog here. If you need to go through your flow, go right ahead. Holding here and breathing. You're down, loaf wolf. Forward into plank, knees down. And now we're going into child's pose. Lifting back up. Walking forward. We're in a normal forward fold now. Notice the difference here. And then step wide. Notice the difference here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And now we're going to inhale, shining our arms wide, going into five-pointed star. Da -da. So this is not a normal vinyasa. You can make whatever vinyasa you want. You can do whatever stretches you want. You don't have to go into anything that doesn't speak to you. Again, find your unique routine. Find your unique stretch. 
All right, so now we've only got a little bit longer to go. So we're going to do a couple of Sabine Wren <laughs> Star Wars lightsaber poses because one of the interesting things is that Sabine got the dark saber, spoilers, in the show. And she said she was perfect with so many kinds of weapons because the Mandalorians are trained about fighting. But this lightsaber thing was totally crazy. And of course, the best Star Wars yoga poses are the warriors, right? So let's do a little bit of warrior action here. So go into the back of your mat. Inhaling shoulders back, really just feel yourself. Then take your hands, bring them together. You can do like hands to heart chest, or you can like pretend you're holding a lightsaber, or if you have a staff, remember we did staff yoga, you can grab that staff, right? So pretend you're holding your lightsaber here. Notice the difference when your hands are forward. Try and really roll those shoulders back and down, right? Now, are you a one-handed lightsaber wielder or two, right? <laughs> At some point, you're going to have to switch this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into warrior one first. So for that, you're going to change to a one-handed grip, and you're going to step forward. I'm stepping forward with my right foot. The lightsaber is in my right. <laughs> Even though I'm a lefty, I think I'm kind of ambidextrous when it comes to lightsabers. Your back foot's going to be at 45 degrees, okay? Just notice your feet here and how it stretches across the saddle. And then you're going to be rotating your hips and chest forward. And then you can grab your lightsaber with both hands again. Inhale, holding the lightsaber. This is a modified arm position for Warrior One. <laughs> Feel how powerful this is. It's like you're going to strike down those who would attack you, right? And maybe lift your chin and chest looking up. Then exhale, slow motion strike. Wah! Right, and then you get into the dual position, shoulders back. Notice the difference between leaning forward and shoulders back. And then pull it in. Let's do three of those, okay? Out, up, back, forward, down. Pull it in. Out, up, back, forward, down, and pull it in. Fantastic. Rotate and open to your wide legs. You can stay here, go into your star, or go into your forward fold. Holding your lightsaber or let it go. Because you know they always tend to fall out of Jedi's hands. I hope Mandalorians have those little wee wraps so that they don't lose the dark saber. But we know how that story goes. Inhale, halfway lift, wide leg. Exhale, fold. Inhale, coming back up. And we're in our position wide-legged. So you're going to turn to the other side of your mat here. And you should be in warrior on the other side. So I've got my left foot forward, back foot 45 degree angle. First off, it's in my left hand. Just feeling it here. Okay. Rotating the chest, feeling everything line up. Both hands. For some reason, my right hand's always on top. Which hand's on top for you guys? <laughs> Okay, from here, inhale, lifting up. And we're just going to stay here for a moment, roll those shoulders back, feel how it feels on this side, keeping those hips in line. And then we're going to do three, so forward, down, slow motion. Inhale, pull it in. Exhale, push it out. Inhale, lifting it up. Shining back for a breath. Exhale down. Inhale in. Holding here. Feel poise. One of my poses we did, power poses, right? Mandalorians have to know how to look badass. So here we go. Exhale out. Inhale, lift. Hold. And last one, down. In. Let it go. Open back up to your wide legs. We're going to do one more cycle here. Down. Up. Down again. All the way lift. And then hands to heart center holding that lightsaber. Yeah! It's just like Luke and all those posters. I know it's kind of corny, but it's also awesome, right? Come on. We're going to do warrior two now. So we're going to rotate back to that first side, right foot forward. But this time, with our heel at 45 degree angles, and again, your legs might need to be wider here, we're taking that first arm with the lightsaber forward, 
This one goes back and your chest is staying open to the wide side of your mat and you're gonna look forward at your lightsaber. And maybe you have to twist your wrist. So here, maybe look back, see what works for you. This is a little different than a normal warrior too. Shoulders back, okay? Then reverse warrior, you drop your back arm and you're gonna kind of like, it feel like I have a knife here. Lift that lightsaber up above you, right? Exhale down. And then we're going to side angle. So your arm goes here and we're gonna sweep the back arm forward and then grab the lightsaber here. So both hands on your side. Kind of looks like I'm gonna knight somebody or something. <laughs> if it works for you. Alternatively, you could try and do a bind here, right? So that's where, now switch hands so you don't cut your leg off. You take one hand under, right? Lift it behind you and you can kind of do something like this. I don't even know. That's a good thing it's not real. <laughs> So I've got the arm under the leg reaching behind me to my back. It looks like this. Again, if it works for you. Wherever you are, untwist yourself. Don't cut your legs off. Come back up. Open to center. Find your forward fold. Your Star Wars forward fold. Rotate to the other side of the mat using your hands, walking over. Finding where your legs need to be on this side. Inhaling up. Okay, front leg bent, back foot 45 degree angle, lightsaber on the other hand, back arm goes out, front arm is also there and your chest is open wide side. Looking at the lightsaber, maybe looking back, along the shoulders, back and down. Then lowering your back arm in, <laughs> raising your arm, looking up at it, being like, yeah, jump in. And then come forward, planting your front arm on your knee. Other arm sweeps under to grab the hilt. You can stay here, or you can switch hands, taking that front arm, putting it under your leg, reaching back, and then trying to do a bind. I'll just pretend I like hung it on the hilt as I was doing this. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. And wherever you are, Find your way back without cutting off your leg. Lifting up one more time. Opening through. Turning forward and we are done with our flows. So you've done five pointed Star Wars stars. Halfway lift. Fold. Come back up. You've done Warrior 1 and Warrior 2. Grab your lightsaber one more time. Victory! Ah! Pull it in. Nice work, everybody. Stick it on. Turn it off. Grab a drink, we're gonna cool down. Nice work. We're gonna do tree, because as we all said, we have to find balance with the force. So tree pose, you can do on the wall. We have a whole bunch of aids that were done in aid yoga. Again, this is one of my promo photos, so here we go, ready? Shoulders back. Move your balance into one foot and start to just lift that foot and play around with it. Okay, don't lock the standing knee and either find a kickstand with the opposite foot. You can put it on your shin or you can raise it up. And again, there's no shame in holding on. Okay, find your balance. If you're gonna be like I was in the photo, you're grabbing your lightsaber above your head and then you draw it down. So you've got kind of like a cool, almost Egyptian kind of look going on. Keeping the hips open, feeling the balance. And for additional challenge, try to close your eyes. Just like Luke did on Dagobah, the balance changes entirely when you close your eyes. And breathe, come back to your intention here. For three, two, and one. Slowly come back down. Shake out that standing foot and we're gonna switch sides. Starting to feel the earth enter through the other foot. Maybe finding a kickstand here, putting your knee on your shin or raise it up, but don't place it on the standing knee. And again, standing knee does not lock. Find where your arms wanna be here. It can be different, it can be out, it can be five pointed tree. <laughs> or if you're with me, hands above, pulling it down. Ooh. And maybe closing your eyes for the additional Jedi challenge. For five, three, Ooh. 
<laughs> and we're done. Shake it out. Good job, everyone. Coming down. If you want to, we can do a little yogi squat going on. So inhale up. Bring your palms together. Slowly, slowly, slowly lower yourself down into a squat. Your heels can be up or down. Not everyone's body is made the same. Again, just like that Mandalorian armor. Use your elbows to open your knees here and just feel. If you're into it, you can do those little side stretches. You know, we've done those before, especially in staff yoga. Do whatever works for you here. And then when you're ready, we're going to come down into our seat. And we're going to do one stretch here. And then we're going to start to cool down. So another one that is in my unpublished reel is cow space, which is an interesting version of the meditation pose. And maybe this works for you. First off, we'll do deer. So if you have both knees to the side, you open up and you make like a little pinwheel with your legs and feet. That's one version you can do. Another version you can do from sitting is that you take the one leg down and the other leg crosses over. So this is Lord of the Fishes, if it works for you. Or the third option, which is the full cow space, is you take this foot and you actually wrap it around, lowering your legs and pulling your feet back into cow space. Again, if it's available for you, some people's knees don't work this way. Or maybe you need to sit on a block or a bolster. Again, play around. Find what works for you. Wherever you are, and any of those options, deer, lord of the fishes, or cow's face, come back to your breath. Come back to the beginning. Come back to your intention. Peace begins with me. We have done our journey. We're cooling down. We have ten more minutes to go. Notice again where your body is touching the ground. Notice if your shoulders are back and down. Notice the temperature of your breath. Is it warmer now? Notice the air on your skin. Notice the depth of your breath. Maybe doing another round of Ujjayi. Ocean's breath. And wherever you are, we're going to find the opposite pose. So you're going to unravel yourself. If you're in deer, you can either do a weird twisty or you can just kind of flop over to the other side. So your feet are pointing the opposite way. If you're in Lord of the Fishes, you just cross it over the other direction. And if you're with me with cow's face, the other leg goes on top and you open all the way, grabbing your feet, finding your balance here. And wherever you are, if you're with me, Roll your shoulders back and down. Close your eyes and find your peace on this side. And notice if it's any different. And noticing the different points that touch the ground. Minding your breath, maybe coming back to the ocean. Feeling the air on your skin and the temperature of the breath on your mouth. Two more breaths here. And wherever you are, we're going to start to cool down on our backs. So find your way down, maybe going through a boat pose or any other poses that you need. We're going to draw our knees in here, knees to chest. And just give yourself a big Side to side, finding what you need to stretch on this. And then we're going to drop one knee in, kick the other foot out, flex that foot and lower it slowly. Kind of doing the opposite of what we did to warm up. The foot that's still up, roll that ankle. And give it a nice big hug in and then we're going to cross and side twist. Again, finding what works for you. Keep the shoulder blades down and only go as far as your body wants. Again, you can use a strap here, a block to rest your knee on, a blanket. 
referencing our AIDS yoga series, whatever works for you. On an inhale, draw it back up and in. Taking any other movements you need before we switch sides. So lowering that foot down slowly with it flexed to drawing the other knee in. Rolling the ankle of the foot that's raised and then hugging the knee in. And when you're ready, twisting to the other side, keeping that shoulder down. Finding ease in wherever you can twist. Maybe looking to the opposite direction. And then draw it back up slowly. Take it on this side. And then draw both knees in for one big hug. Maybe curl up into a ball and then let it down. Let your feet down, keeping them near your hips. Your fingers should just brush your ankles here. And if you have that block, now's a great time to use it. We're going into bridge. So you can put it between your legs if that's comfortable for you. And that way you're squeezing and rolling your hips in to keep good form. Plant your hands down again, shoulder blades down. Feel centered, feel your hips. And now just very barely lift your hips just to notice the way that your hips tilt. And do that a couple times. We haven't done this in a little bit. And then come to stillness. And now focusing on your breath and pushing into the ground. Inhale, lift the hips, lift the chest to where you can find your bridge. If you have the block, focus on keeping those hips together. If you don't have the block, focus on keeping the thighs spiraling inwards here. And exhale, let it down. We're going to do two more. Inhale, lift, finding maybe a little bit more height here, keeping the shoulder blades down, chin tucked. Exhale down. And now if you have wheel in your practice, you're welcome to do that. Let's have fun. I'm going to give it a try with, <laughs> with the block for additional challenge. So if you're doing wheel, your hands are planted by your shoulders, fingers facing down your body, planting your feet, tucking your chin, and then lifting into wheel. And this does make it a ton more difficult. Or just do bridge. And wherever you are, when you go down, again, remember to tuck that chin safely. Did you just hear my knees pop? <laughs> and find yourself on the ground. And if you need to do any other movements here, counter poses, feel free. We're going to go into a uh, legs on the wall if you have a clear wall. If you have a block or a chair, you can put your feet on the chair, or you can just go into an early savasana. So if you're with me, rotate onto the wall here, and just put your legs up in the air. Again, if you don't have it, you can just stay, maybe cover yourself with a blanket, go into your savasana. If you're on the wall, your hips are almost at the wall, your feet are up, shoulder blades back and down. Maybe you have to have a blanket or a pillow under your head. Go right ahead. And this is the beginning of the end. Another story awaits us. So come back to your breath. Come back to your intention. Find your peace, and we'll be in legs of the wall for three minutes, and then we're gonna go into Savasana. So find yourself a nice comfy place. And I'll call you out in a few minutes.
And if you're ready, you can start to find your way back to the mat or you can stay here if it calls to you. Wherever you are, find your way into your savasana, your final resting pose. If you're with me, legs wide, palms can be up to receive energy or down to ground. I'm going to keep mine up, shoulder blades down, finding that comfortable final pose. Closing your eyes, feeling where you touch the earth, feeling your breath. Feeling the air on your skin. Come back to your intention once more. Peace begins with me. Imagine each breath connected to the force, drawing in the good and the light and exhaling any last tightness and negativity. Fully releasing yourself to the power of the force. The power of the light. The power that you give yourself as you relax. To be yourself and to be one with everyone. We'll spend one more minute here. Find your final relaxation. Begin to deepen your breaths if you're ready to come out. And if you're not, keep going as long as you need. Maybe find some movement in your ankles and wrists. And come into a big body stretch, thanking yourself for this long, slow exercise. And then curl over to one side and just stay there for a moment. Sabine said that we are making a difference and that we won't always fight this battle alone. We've shared this practice together and I thank you again for being here. Thank yourself for being here. And when you're ready, find your way back into that easy seat. Rolling the shoulders back and down. Come back to your breath. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, drawing it down to your chest. And we're gonna end as we did in the beginning. Come back to your intention. Decide if you wanna change it going forward or if you'll keep it for the rest of today. Two breaths, first to cleanse and to seal. Inhale in and let it all go. Deep breath. And exhale. I thank you for sharing your practice with me. Draw your thumb knuckles to your forehead, your center of knowledge and intuition and the light, the light side and love in me. Thanks the light, the light side and the student that all of you were for sharing with me. Enjoy the rest of your day and namaste. Thank you again for joining me. I am Riftwing Designs Everywhere and I will see you again at the end of February. For Chinese New Year, I'm going to be making some art and we're going to do some cool uh, kind of another New Year, New You exercises. So I am taking suggestions. Follow me at Rifting Designs Everywhere and may the force be with you all. Until next time, take care, everyone. <laughs>